All right, we are working with fraction decimal percent equivalent equivalencies. We are going to rock and roll through these because we actually already have a lot of information on how to go from one to the other um, from previous things that we've learned. So we're gonna put a lot of puzzle pieces together today. Um, the first thing we're gonna work on are going from decimals to fractions. And to do that, we simply Say it, write it, simplify it. And sorry, I do need a manicure. Please ignore my horrible nails. Um, say it, write it, simplify it. So for this, we need to make sure that we are saying our decimals correctly with their appropriate place values. So we have four tenths, the tenths place value. So four tenths. You can even close your eyes and see if you can picture the fraction four tenths. What number is on top? What number is on bottom? Four tenths, four out of 10. Then we see if we can simplify it, right? What can I divide four and 10 both by? Well, they're both even, so we can both divide both the numerator and the denominator by two, right? So four divided by two gives us two. 10 divided by two gives us five. So the simplest way to write four tenths as a fraction would be two fifths. Our next one, 26 tenths hundredths. 26 hundredths, 26 out of 100. All right, and then we ask ourselves, can we simplify it? We can't always, but um, let's see. We've got 26 and 100, which are both even, and all even numbers can be divided by two. So half of 26 is 13, and half of 100 is 50, and that's as simple as we're gonna be able to go. All right, same thing for our next one. Three tenths, hundreds, thousands. Three thousands, three out of 1,000. And this one, there isn't anything for us to simplify by, so it's already in its simplest terms as three over 1,000. Our next one, one and, I read the decimal point as an and, one and seven tenths. So one whole, and our fraction is seven out of 10. And again, on this one, we can't simplify it. That is as simple as it goes, seven over 10. And our last one, three and 75 hundredths. Three and 75 over 100. All right, so 75 hundredths, I like to think about money when I'm working with decimals. And when I see 75 hundredths, I'm thinking about 75 cents. And I know that to get 75 cents, I'm talking about quarters. So I can divide both of these by 25, All right? How many quarters does it take to get 75 cents? Three. Um, how many quarters does it make take to get a dollar? Four. So include my whole number, I've got three and three fourths. There we go. All right, so decimal to fraction. Say it, write it, simplify it. To go from a fraction to a decimal, we already know how to do this. We know that the fraction bar means to divide, and that's exactly what we're gonna utilize. All right, this works every time. We just have to remember that the top dog goes in the house. Remember, think about that chihuahua, um, or my dogs, right, our Pomeranian and our pit bull. The biggest one is not always the one that gets to go in the house. The biggest one is not always the boss. It's whichever one is on top. A little dog can be a boss of the household, all right? So our top dog goes in the house, so our top number goes in the house. Our denominator goes at the door, and then we're just gonna divide. Nothing fancy. Four goes into zero, oh sorry, four goes into one, zero times. We put our zero on top. How are we gonna keep dividing? We add that decimal zero, bring that decimal up, so that we can keep dividing and not change our number, right? One decimal zero, one and zero tenths is the same thing as one whole. So we haven't changed any of the numbers we're working with. All right, so now four goes into 10, two times. Two times four is eight. We're just doing long division. We have a remainder, so we're gonna add another zero. 
until we maybe see a pattern. Four goes into 20 five times. And we don't have any leftovers. So we know that one fourth is equal to 25 hundredths, which is reasonable because one fourth of a dollar is 25 cents. All right, same thing for our next one. Three over eight. So our top dog goes in the house, our denominator goes at the door, and then we just divide. Eight goes into three, zero times. We're gonna add that decimal and a zero so we can keep dividing. All right, eight goes into 30, three times. 30 minus uh, 24 gives us six. Well, we're gonna have to add another zero. All right, so eight goes into 60, seven times. That gives us 56. Wow, we still have a denominator, and I don't see a pattern yet, so I'm gonna add another zero. We usually are gonna stop when we get to three decimal places. We don't wanna keep dividing for eternity. So we stop when we have no remainder left over, or we start to see a pattern, or we just get to three decimal places. Eight goes into 40 five times. Woohoo, no remainder. So this one, we went to three decimal place values before we found a remainder. Awesome, so 375,000. All right, now one third. Our top dog goes in the house, denominator's at the door, and now we just divide. Three goes into one, zero times, add a decimal so we can keep dividing. Three goes into 10, three times, whoops. Got a little excited there with the multiplication symbol. 10 minus nine gives us one. All right, we've got a remainder, so we have that zero. Oh, do we see a pattern that is starting to emerge? I could keep this multiplication problem, or this division problem going on for eternity. So we have a case where if I were to keep dividing, I would literally be doing the same division problem over and over and over again. So I'm gonna pause. And instead of doing any more division, I am gonna use a little symbol to show that that three is gonna keep on repeating forever. I'm gonna put a little line on top. That little line is a symbol that, again, if we were to keep dividing, this three would just keep popping up as our answer. So our final answer is just 33 hundredths with a little line over it to show that that repeats forever. All right, that is um, how we go from decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals. All right, so decimal to fraction, say it, write it, simplify it. So for this part, super important that we are able to read decimals with proper place value, tenths, hundredths, thousands, knowing how to read a decimal when we have a whole number, and then a fraction to a decimal, using something we already know, that the fraction of our means to dun, 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 divide. That's it, right? So fraction to decimal, we use division, our top dog goes in the house, and then we are set to go.